So you know how we got the goats this last fall? Remember my husband came home with two goats and then we ended up with five female goats and you know, the whole thing. And then we got, what do we got? Then we got chickens, the baby chicks, like 75 of them, something like that, right? They're still not butchered, just to let you know. And they're all in the hen house because they were moved to a little shack and then the goats had their babies and he moved them all to the, oh, they were getting eaten. So they moved, <laughs> so, <laughs> not a secure place. So they moved all into the shed, chicken coop. Okay, and then so the goats are now using the shed um, since they're out. So it's a little, you know, <sighs> whatever. And then what else did they come home with? Um, um, oh, my son bought a butcher, not a butcher, a bucking heifer that is supposed to calve out here any day now. And, and he bought a bottle calf, but um, before he was able to bring it home, some guy offered him an extra $50 or $100 for it. So he's like, oh, what the heck, you know, I don't need it as bad. This guy had a, a mom that lost hers, so they were going to put it on her and, you know nice of him but yeah I was like and the guy at the sales barn was like how are you gonna get the because you're gonna go home and get the trailer and bring it back just for a calf he's like seriously and my son is like well no I was gonna put it in the back of the pickup <laughs> literally in the back of his pickup they've done that many times going to the vet you have just a calf to take to the vet they just throw it in the back of the pickup cow totally different story yeah so we've just kind of gotten a few extra animals around here and just when I have my husband convinced that we're going to move our dog out of the house and in with the goats because she's very friendly with the baby goats um my son comes home from work with this say hi who's this this is willow willow yes But, hmm? Can you say hi? Say hi, everybody. Oops. Whoa! Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Isn't she adorable? She's so cute and so much work. So much work. Because when we got Maggie, um, it was during 2020 and the kids were home. So it didn't matter. But now my son is not only going to school, but working every night. And I'm like, I'm back to doing doggy daycare. And it's not easy. Like I was having to work and it's like having a baby and working, you know, you have your, you're holding the baby or the puppy and you're, you know, doing the finger typing. Cause you know, I know it'll get better. You know, she just has been here a few days and, but Yeah, we're just a, a zoo. My t my husband was talking about turkeys the other day, and I'm like, we're not getting any turkeys. Like, no. No turkeys. You want turkeys? Go to the airport. You can see them at the airport. And you turn off. <laughs> no more animals. No more animals. Yeah. But anyway, today, I'm not sure what I am attaching this to. I think I'm attaching it to the tallow video. So if we're doing tallow, it's all about tallow and tallow balm. Um, if it's, I think that's what it's going to. I think that's what it's going to. And all the information is in the video. And three things. Dream big. Be true to you. You are worth it. And I'm Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen. Let's go check out this tallow video. Okay, to start, this is my tallow that we uh, dry rendered. Okay, and it's great for soap and cooking, frying, all, all you know, all that stuff. But when it comes to tallow balm or a lotion or a lip balm or any of those things, you know, it's got too much of that beef scent to it yet when you, when you dry render. That's what I have found. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to wet render, even though it's already been rendered. Okay, we're just going to pull some of the 
um, the impurities, the smell, the, you know, whatever, out of it. Um, so, and the more you wet render, the more times you do it, the, the purer and harder your tallow is going to get, okay? And this stuff was pretty solid. Like, I, it was out on the counter overnight, and it's still pretty solid. This was some really good 4-H um, <laughs> calves <laughs> that the butcher saved me. Uh, all the, the, the leaf towel from them. But, um, yeah, that was, that was a process, you guys. Let me tell you. But, so we are going to, um, basically add salt to this to pull some of those impurities out. It's not going to add you know, the salt's not going to stay in the tallow. Um, it's to pull everything out. Even though there's not a lot on here to pull out, per se. There really isn't. Um, just some of, there's a few impurities and there's still, you know, you want it um, very mild, not with no scent. Um, and you can do this in the oven or the crock pot, okay? On low, on low. So if you do it in the oven, you know that 170 to 200 is plenty high. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to add um, enough water to make sure that we have a very good um, distance. Should we distance between the bottom and, you know. So there's a place for the impurities to go and it's easy to, to take out. You know what I'm saying? Or to it's kind of like beeswax, you know, you put beeswax in water and it'll, you let it harden and it's the same thing. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this on, um, low and I'm going to leave it go till it's totally melted. I might mix it a couple times. Okay. Okay. And now that it's totally melted, you can see that layer of tallow on top, right? You, you see that layer so I'm just going to mix it just to show you. Um, so it was already, it's already separated. Like as it melted, it, it, it did its thing. It separated between the two. But I'm just going to mix it so you can see, like, obviously it's not, you know, separated anymore. But I'm going to put the cover on it. And since it's super cold outside, um, it's going on my deck. And it's going to sit there overnight because it takes a while for it to get super hard. And this is the next day, like beautiful. Look at that stuff. It's beautiful. Okay, so I usually just, uh, yeah, it's hard. Um, <laughs> duh, girl, it was, you know, freezing last night. But anyway, um, you could stick this in your garage too, or, you know, just someplace cold so it, or in the fridge if you have a small amount. Um, I just split it in two so I can get it apart and out of the, out of the crock pot. Um, and you can already tell. So if you were just doing this the first time, you would scrape all that bottom stuff off the bottom. Those are the impurities there, okay? Even though this has been rendered once already, you can tell the difference in the smell um, just by um, doing this once. And you can do this again and again and again until you get it to that hard, mellow um tallow that you prefer okay okay this is tallow mid melt so you want to put it on a double boiler and melt it down to you get this beautiful consistency okay then to make tallow balm it's similar that's my rose oil it smells wonderful um it's very similar to making body butter in that everything gets melted down and then cooled. So for mine, for every two ounces of infused tallow, I add one tablespoon, uh, approximately, of infused oil. If it would be very soft tallow, I would go less. Sometimes I beat it a little more and um, so it's fluffier. Sometimes I don't beat it as much and then so it's it's... Um, a thicker, like more like a balm than a whipped. This is really technically whipped tallow balm. Whipped tallow. <laughs> Maybe I should change that on my labels. Hmm. Yeah. 
Um, this is just a bigger batch of um, lavender rose. Rose lavender that I'm making. Which sounds better. Lavender rose. Rose lavender. I think lavender rose sounds better. But anyway, what do I know? Um, so basically you pour, you know, your tallow and the amount of oil you want and put it in the fridge. This is my chamomile. So this was already infused. It just wasn't strained. And I thought, well, this would be a great time to show you how I strain my tallow. This is my crock pot that I do not use for soap anymore because it just cannot be used for soap anymore. Um, line it with a towel, put the jar in there uncovered. Um, I'm going to uncover it once I pour the water in. Pour the water in up to the amount of the towel or just below the rim. You don't want it to overflow your, your, your jar. Um, and then set it on, um, low. You can set it on high for 15 minutes and then low the rest till it's all melted down. Okay. Or you can put it on a double boiler on the stove just you know, you know, you want to keep the components of the herbs. But anyway, um, double cheesecloth lined and slowly strain out the chamomile flowers. This is why I say sometimes botanicals can be present in the tallow because it doesn't seem to matter how many layers I put in there. Those little buggers just get through. And those are actually the seeds of the of the chamomile. They're just super, super tiny and, you know. But anyway, you want to strain this out through a cheesecloth. Um, being this is, I always weigh my stuff. You know, we went through that on, I can't remember what video that was. Um, maybe it was the seed buckthorn with the myrrh. But you want to, um, if you're doing it for selling, you want to know what your product you know, what the start weight, what your product costs you, you know, the start weight plus the flowers, the cost of the flowers, if you buy them, you know, all that jazz. I do it anyway, even though I didn't buy these, but I have purchased some in the past. So if I had to purchase them, then I know what my cost is. Do you see what I'm saying there? Yeah. Okay. Make sure you squeeze out that oil from your herbs. Now the tallow balm has to be strained when obviously it's warm, just like coconut oil. So, and I use the same cloth because it's going to be in the same batch of everything, but, um, be careful when you squeeze it out cause it will be hot. Um, I just press it as much as I can. And then I have a little, another thing that I can press it between, but just be careful when you strain it. And then you cool it in the fridge um, till it's solid across the top, you know, um, it just depends. I decided to whip this cause I forgot to show you me whipping my other one. I'm such an airhead lately. Gosh. Um, but you just take a beater, uh, and, and, and whip it. The trick, the hardest part about this, especially with my little jar, it's easier in my bowl. Um, see my bowl. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Look at that. Um, it will kind of get a little hard as it cools to room temp because you've just beat the crap out of it. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, if you didn't want it whipped, just pour it into your container as that. And it'll be a literally a balm. Okay. This is more whipped. I know it, it's, it's, it's probably not clear on my website. I need to go change that before this video airs, but just whip it. The hard part, like I said, scrape the bottom of what I was saying was scrape the bottom of the jar really good because your beater will knock it down to that bottom part. And then you'll have this hard part, um, below. So make sure you scrape your bowl or your jar or whatever you're whipping it in to get all the tallow balm incorporated. See? Yep. There I am showing you to scrape your jar. It's, it's a thing guys. It's a thing. And then just keep whipping and scraping till you like the consistency. It doesn't take really long. It just depends how much air you want in there, you know, incorporated in there. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now the chamomile is going to be a little bit lighter or a little bit yellower because the chamomile really colors the, you know, tallow and stuff. And then all that's left is to package it. 
Um, hopefully my new labels are here in time for this. And you'll get to see the new labels that I am changing over to. Surprise, surprise. Um, but yeah, basically fill the jars. These are a two ounce jar. Um by volume it is a 1.5 ounce um by weight and then my bigger jars um are and my bigger jars which I don't think I show you that are they are a four four ounce jar but they hold three ounces of tallow and if you're using this on your face for a moisturizer um, it takes me forever to use mine up. Not forever, but, you know, it seems to last a while. So that is a good thing. Okay, I'm going to show you my footage of how I infuse my tallow with my botanicals. Um, so, but, um, I'm going to give you a little info about tallow. So there were rumors and you know how rumors are, there's always a little bit of truth to them, that the plant oils were floundering and not gaining popularity as fast as the producers wanted them to. So there were, they started a animal fats are bad for people and they pulled the tallow um, that made the fries that they used in all these restaurants and they replaced it with uh, good for you plant oils, which we are finding nowadays are not always good for you. Um, look up canola if you really are curious about that. Um, you know, they did all that. The eggs are bad for you. No, they're not. They're really, really good for you. Um, certain, you know, whatever. As a kid growing up in the eighties, the only person I knew that was fat was Boss Hog and his wife, Lulu on the Dukes of Hazard. To me, they were humongous. Okay. I was amazed they could walk down the street. Okay. I mean, they were huge. And you look around nowadays, and I am not being mean, judgmental, nothing. And we have a lot of big, heavy, overweight people. And it is not, a lot of it isn't even their own fault. It is the food that is being produced and how it's produced and provided to us and knowingly provided to us that it's bad for us. Um, so I'm sorry. Yes, that's true. Uh, so tell a bomb, uh, you can go to bumblebeeapothecary.com and read a whole lot more than what I am going to skim off here. But tallow balm is deeply nourishing and moisturizing. It contains vitamins A, B12, E, D, K, which are all beneficial for our skin. It helps prevent skin's loss of moisture, contains conjugated linoacic, which is CLA, with natural anti-inflammatory properties. All these nutrients are found only in animal products. Only in animal products, not any plant-based products, okay? It's how it is. Contains oleic acid, which is omega-9, aids other components in penetrating deeply into the skin. It's antibacterial and antimicrobial, huge. Contains palmitic acid, um, which is omega-7, helps improve the protective barrier function of skin, and it's one of our skin's basic building blocks. It's That's huge. Um, it's rich in minerals, contains, contains stearic acid, which aids to repair damaged skin, improves skin flexibility and suppleness, aids in skin regeneration for healthier and youthful skin, helps with, helps calm eczema, clear up diaper rash and acne, helps with dry cracked skin, sun damaged skin, scars, and the list goes on and on. You can even use it as a deep hair conditioner, but, um, you can like, tame down frizzies really quickly um but my telebomb contains um infused botanicals and that's the only scent and color it contains and there you have it the luscious whipped telebomb yes i need to put that on my labels i hope you had a good time thank you for stopping by i will see you next time Bye bye